John chapter 8 and the verse 31. <laughs> to the Jews who have believed in him, Jesus said, If you hold on to my teaching, you are. Let's read this again, all of us. To the Jews, the Jesus, the, to, to the Jews who have believed in him, Jesus said. If you hold on to my teaching, you are really my disciples. In some other versions it says, if you hold on to my word, then you are truly my disciples. Why? Are there different kinds of disciples? Part of the mandate of this church, or of any church, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew 28 says it this way. And Jesus said, all authority has been given unto me, therefore go and what? Make disciples of all nations. The main duty, the main responsibility of the church of Jesus Christ is discipleship making. And who is a disciple? A disciple is a follower in the context of the church. A disciple is a person who has been brought into believing in Jesus and continuing in a life in Jesus. Church membership does not start with signing your name on a register. You can sign your name in the, in the register of a church and not be part of the church. Church membership does not start with being baptized as a baby or as a child. And I say church here in the general sense. To be a Christian. The word disciple truly means, Jasmine, can you keep that verse there? The word disciple means you can replace it with a Christian. Because it was in Antioch in the book of Acts, we are told that the disciples of Jesus were first called what? Christians. So a disciple equals Christian. This year, we will make a commitment to continue to live our lives as disciples of Jesus and also as Christians. Means the same. As a church, we are committed to supporting each and every person who comes to this place to become a disciple. To become a Christian or to continue living their life as a Christian. God bless you. And Jesus turns to those who have believed in him and he said to them, Some of you might be following me for a miracle, some of you followed me. In fact, in this in this context, Jesus had just fed 5,000 and he crossed onto the other side. And the Bible says people followed him because they saw the miracles. In John chapter 4, there was the miracle of Cana, where he turned water into wine. Then before and after that, you had the miracle of the woman who said, who he told him, I know that the, the, 
the man you are staying with isn't your husband. Then we had the man at the pool of Bethesda. And then we have the feeding of the 5,000. So, Jesus became very popular man. People heard about him. You want a miracle? Go to Jesus. You want food? Go to Jesus. You want this? Go to Jesus. So people followed him everywhere. But Jesus stands to the Jews who believed in him. Us who believed in him. And he says, if you hold on to my teaching, the word if, that if preposition, if there, in the Greek is since. It's not if as in a condition. But it is saying since you hold on to my teaching, then you will truly become my disciples. So the translation here says, if you hold on to my word. The King James says, if my word abides in you, then you will truly be my disciples. How do we hold on to the teachings of Jesus? What can I do to hold on? There is a commitment from my side. There is a decision from my side to hold on to it. There's a personal decision. And as we heard last Sunday, the people of Israel were camped across the river to cross into the promised land. And Jesus said, and, and Moses said to them, Today I said before you, life, prosperity, death, and destruction. Now I tell you, choose life. And if you hold on to my word, God says, you will prosper in the land for which I have sworn to give you. I do not want that this year we as a church will succeed in fellowship. Oh, we will have fellowship this year. In fact, we want to invent ways to have fellowship this year. We will eat on birthdays, nice food. We will have good friendships made in this church. But I do not want that at the end of this year, that is what we have succeeded in. What I want us to succeed this year is that this church will be an instrument to support you to become a disciple of Jesus. Is it every person in this place who is truly a disciple? I hope so. But Jesus said, there are some of you who will believe in me, not because you truly want to be a Christian, but for something else. So there are phony disciples. There are people who think they are disciples and they are not. Don't make coming to this church your aim of your life. Make Jesus Lord. Hallelujah. We are not proud to say we are 50, we are 60, we are 80, we are 100. But just because we fill this place up with people, we want to make disciples. And a disciple is a person who is taught the words of Jesus and truly lives by this. Do you make a commitment this year to be a disciple? Are you willing to submit yourself to be taught? 
the words of Jesus. And that is one thing also that I want us this year to concentrate on, the teaching of Jesus. Believe me, there are so many teachings now in the world which are not the teachings of Jesus. And false teaching is a threat to the stability of the church. Let me give you one example. You who have believed in Jesus have moved from darkness to light. You do not need anything except to remain in Him. If you remain in Jesus, you are safe and you are secure. Nowadays, there's a teaching that says that you come to Jesus, but you need something else. There are many people who spend their time fighting the devil than honoring Jesus. The devil is behind everything that they do. No. If you are in Jesus, the devil cannot get a hold of you. You are secure in him. Why? Because Jesus has won the victory over Satan. So you don't have to live in fear. You don't have to live in constant fear. But do you know how many churches and how many ministries, whatever you call them, are built on deliverance? Deliverance dreams. Bring oil. Like this morning, you know, talking to a man, and she told me, Pastor, can you get oil and anoint me and pray that I will get well? I said, whether there is oil or not, God can heal you. And we want to expose these lies of the enemy and to teach what is real. This church is not your route to heaven. Jesus is the way to heaven. It's living in him. So we want to be able to direct you to Jesus. And this was very, very plain. He turned to them and he said, I don't know why you believed in me, but what interests me is that you are my disciple. And how can you become my disciple if you hold on to my teaching? Then you are really my disciple. If you reverse that, if you do not hold on to my teaching, then you are not really my disciple. The choice is yours. The choice is mine. Do you want to be a disciple of Jesus? <coughs> then what would you do? If you have come to know him, then you won't choose anything else. But you choose him. Because if you choose anything else, you are deceiving yourself. And we don't want you being deceived. This Friday, and I'll end with this, there was a whole discussion about 2012 and the ending of the world. Huh? How many of you saw Shara Bank? Well, a, a, a discussion about it. A whole, a whole program. And there were these two people who were literally afraid. They were literally scared. You go out there, I don't know about you, but every day I meet people who tell me, are you afraid of on 12th of December, the world will end? I tell them, if it ends, I don't have to pay my house loan. <laughs> the bank will lose. 
no. I just joke and I say that. I said, look, it repents. I said, but I'm not that unwise. I said, if it's not going to end in December, I said, take all your money. Go on a holiday. On the, on the 13th of December, you will come back and you will know what the bank will, will tell you. <laughs> I said, people believe it. And you know how many Christians who believe this? This rubbish. Who do you believe? Who do you follow? The pastor? The church? Oh Jesus. Belief in God is not our priority this year. We want to support you to become a disciple of Jesus. And Jesus is very, very clear. If you want to be my disciple, then you must abide. Then you must remain then you must hold on to my teaching. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except by me. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. Let's hold on to these words. The teachings of Jesus is there in the Bible. You cannot say, I believe in Jesus, but I choose what I want to believe or what I don't want to believe. You either hold on to it, and hold on to it means that you live it, that it pervades your life, every aspect of your life. It influences your decisions. So this year, we choose, as a church, to be a disciple-making church. And whatever we will do, let me remind you, it is to help you hold on to the teachings of Jesus. What concerns me this year what preoccupies my thinking this year is to say, for example, how can I help juries hold on to Christ's teaching? How can he grow deeper in his knowledge of Jesus? How can I grow him deeper in his ministry? That will be my concern. Anything else is secondary. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want to say this before you and to say do you want to be a disciple this year? And hold on to the teachings of Jesus. I like what the next verse says. And you will know the truth. And what? And the truth shall set you free. If you hold on to my teachings, you are truly my disciples. You, you are really my disciples. And you will know the truth. Knowing the truth will come to discipleship. And the word make disciples the word make disciples you know you make a disciple through teaching is teach actually disciples matter two there are two words to teach to impart the daskalos and to proclaim and to make someone by teaching a person 
a medical doctor professor or a professional person makes a disciple through his teaching. There's a difference between informing a person one plus one is two than a, than a surgeon who is a, a consultant surgeon teaching a medical student how to dissect a person. Something else. So to make a disciple the word make disciple in Matthew is actually teach disciples in Greek. And that's why Jesus says we become disciples by holding on to his teachings. By holding on to what he has taught us. And what has he taught us? To pray for one another, to encourage one another, to live in holiness. <clears throat> These are the words of Jesus. These are the teachings of Jesus. Amen? Amen. So we want to set our part clear. We are not going to listen to genealogies and myths. Do you know that the world is going to end in 12 and 12? If only you believe in Ahmed's teaching, then you escape it. Give me five euro, and I'll give you the secret. I know the secret to the end of the world. Because I know the Bible. I will fast and pray for you. So that, you, so that when the world ends, you will be saved. That's a lie. That is not the teaching of Jesus. But do you know how many will make money out of that? A single person came to me and gave me a CD. I have done this teaching about marriages and how marriages will succeed. He said to me, take it and listen to it. And I'm going, you're not married. Of course you can write a perfect treatise about marriage. 